So in this example, we're being told that the time is 7.15, and then they're asking what is the angle between the hour and minute hand? So they want to know the angle between here's our hour hand and here's our minute hand. What is this angle here? Okay. So how are we going to do this problem? Well, we know that if we do a complete revolution in a circle, right, that's going to be 360 degrees. So let's apply this to the clock, right, and let's talk about minutes. If I go one full revolution around, that's going to be 60 minutes. So I want to know how many degrees per minute there are. So there are 360 degrees in one full revolution, right, and we just determined that there are 60 minutes as well in one revolution. So this will give me degrees per minute, how many degrees there are for every minute, right? So if I do this out, you're going to get the following. You're going to get here 6 degrees per minute. Now we want to do the same thing for hours, right? So if I look here, one full revolution, right, that will be 12 hours. So same thing, I'm just going to do it like this now. I'm going to do 360, so 360 degrees over 12 hours. Okay, and if I do this out here, I'm going to get 30. So I get 30 here. So I get 30 degrees per hour. So now we have all the information we need. First, I'm going to find this angle starting from 12 and going to 3. So starting from here to here, I want to know what this angle in here is going to be. Then I'm going to find this angle going from 12 to where my hour hand is right here, right? So just drawing it in. I want to figure out what this angle is as well. Once I find those two angles, when I subtract the two, that's going to leave me with the angle between the minute and hour hand, all right? So how are we going to find this angle first, going from 12 to 3, looking at the minute hand? Well, we know there are 6 degrees per minute, right? So all I have to do here is do 15, so I'm going to do 15 minutes, right, times 6 degrees per minute. When I do this, you'll see that minutes cancel out, and I'm left with degrees, and that will give me the angular measure here, right? So if I do 15 times 6, it gives me 90 degrees, and that makes sense, right? That's definitely a 90 degree angle. So this is going to be 90, so 90 degrees, and now we're going to do the same thing here with the hours, right? So let's go ahead and erase this. So same thing, I'm going to count my hours here, so I'm going all the way to seven, right? So I'm gonna do seven, so seven hours times, and now we'll have 30 degrees per hour, okay? Now, just be careful here, you're not done, because look at my minute hand, it's on the three, right? So 15 minutes have gone by here, Meaning, my hour hand is not going to be on the 7, right? It's going to be a little past, and in particular, it's going to be a quarter past, right, 7? Because it already went 15 minutes. So, in order to account for that quarter hour, I have to do plus, right, and then a quarter hour times 30 degrees per hour. When I do this, again, the hours cancel, and I'm left with just degrees. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm doing 7 times 30, right, plus a quarter times 30. And that's going to give me 217.5, and this is going to be degrees. So this is the whole angle right here, 217.5 degrees. So we are almost done. Let's go ahead and just erase this now. So all I'm going to do at this point is do 217.5 degrees minus 90 degrees. And when I do this, this is going to give me the angular measure between the hour and minute hand. So doing this, right, plugging into our calculator, we're going to get the following. We get 127.5 degrees. This is going to be the angular measure between our minute and hour hand. Okay, and that is it.